shows no specifications for street shows, Mr. Mortensen. Oh, well, don't tell me our esteemed city attorney has dug up an ordinance against a little free entertainment. Well, Fat, you haven't given anything away for nothing in your entire career. Mr. Archer. Well, here's two tickets to tonight's performance. Down front on the aisle. First thing a man in public office learns is take a present, owe a favor. Now, Fats, just keep the noise down, huh? The most exciting act that's ever appeared in our fair city of Stockton. The lovely lady with the face of an angel and the voice of a nightingale. The sweetheart of the Sierras, Miss Liberty Keene, ladies and gentlemen. She's been called the songbird of Sacramento, the golden voice of the Golden State. And you will hear that lovely voice on our stage here this evening. Let's hear something now. Well, friend, we can't do a whole show here on the street, but if you'll be in our theater tonight... Let's hear what she can do. Come on, come on, girlie. Give us a sample. Oh, well, now, look, friend, I just got through telling you that we can't... You're going to start singing a song or do I start shooting? Those young fools. It's all right, folks. It's all right. It's all part of the act. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Ambrose, the man whose keen eye and steady hand has won him 53 medals from the crown heads of Europe. And if you think that was sharpshooting, just wait till you see his performance on our stage tonight. Take them in, deputy. There was no real harm done, Mr. Archer. Fats here was just drumming up business for his new show. I know what he was doing. And you heard what I said. Well, I'm, uh... Gonna have to run in for this, Fats. Justice will triumph, ladies and gentlemen. Never fear, the curtain at Morton's Theater will go up at 8 o'clock sharp tonight. Round up your songbird and let's go. Well, if you'd waited, I could have told you it was part of the act. They'll need a lawyer. Will you help them out? Well, Heath, I can't do that unless they ask me. Well, I'm asking you. call it entertainment. But the fact is, discharging firearms on a city street is in violation of Ordinance 116 and punishable by a fine of $300. $300? Archer, you know I can't spare that kind of money. Well, it seems to me you have enough money to hire a very expensive legal counsel. Oh, well, uh, Mr. Mortensen and I have a little agreement. Best seats in the house for opening night, right? Fred, it seems to me that under the circumstances, $300 is a bit excessive. Well, if your client prefers, perhaps he'd take the jail sentence of 30 days. Oh, come on now, Phil. We're only dealing with the Fats Mortensen gang, not Quantrell's Raiders. <laughs> is that the latest in San Francisco sophistication? 
I mean, this is a little out of your current bailiwick. What is your interest here, Jared? Well, like any other citizen of Stockton, I think I'd be disappointed if the show didn't go on. Yeah, so would I. What happened out there today could have caused serious trouble. Oh, yeah. settle down, Phil. Anybody hurt? Any damage done? It's besides the point. There wasn't anything to boil over about. Well, what do you want me to do? Ignore the entire incident because Jared Barkley is involved? Well, now it seems to me that the punishment ought to fit the crime. Fred, why don't we have Mr. Mortensen do a show at the orphanage as a condition of his release? Agreed, Fats? Well, fine, fine. All right, it's settled then. Now, clear him out of here. Mr. Barkley, thank you very much. The tickets will be at the box office. Liberty, my dear? Well, it's apparent to me, Sheriff, that you and I have to reach some kind of understanding about our respective duties. Now, don't go puffing up like a turkey gobbler, Phil. You're fresh in your job, and I've had mine for ten years. I can see I'm going to have to cure your buck fever just like I did Jared's when he first took over your job. <laughs> well, I remember. If you'd like to hear the sad story, I'll buy you a drink. To celebrate what? How the big-time San Francisco attorney got the best of a small-town lawyer? No, thank you. <laughs> stage door. Oh, thank you, Mr. Morton. Oh, uh, you better get some food into him. All right. has health, wealth, and uh, I hope happiness. And a Liberty Keen, sweetheart of Strawberry and now of Stockton. Mm -hmm. You know, Heath, when I was a very little girl, Papa used to read me stories at night. And there was a book we both loved. It was about a, a poor ragamuffin boy who grew up to learn that he had great expectations. I'm very happy for you, Heath. I've often wondered how you've been making out, Libby. Well, now you know. I'm sorry you never made it to New York, Libby. <laughs> What's funny? Oh, life. When you were 16 years old, you begged me to run away and marry you. Remember? And, and Papa ran you off? <laughs> well, that wasn't funny. Not to me. Oh, nor to me. But Papa kept saying, just that far away, Libby. Just that far away from success. After Papa died, I went back to Strawberry to look for you. But it, uh, it was too late. You'd already gone. I, I guess everything turns out for the best. Did it, Libby? Just think, if I had run off with you that summer, why, right now, you wouldn't be a dashing, eligible bachelor entertaining actresses with the champagne suppers. Well, I don't make a habit of it. The suppers or the proposals. I know that. Any other man would have arranged this whole supper just to show a girl what she, what she missed. Not you. You're kind and concerned. It's almost as if you still cared a little. You don't stop caring about people just because you're separated. Keith, if only we could turn time back. If we could just be the way we used to be. But I, I guess that isn't possible. But I, 
I had tonight, and I'll always be grateful for that. That sounds like you're saying goodbye. That's right. But why? Well, I'm not sure what time the saloons close here in Stockton, but when they do, the great Ambrose will come weaving his way back to the theater. And if I'm not there... And if you're not there, what? He'll either fall asleep in a drunken stupor or be waiting up for me in a wild, jealous rage. Well, does he have a right to be jealous? He's my husband. I needed somebody to, to look after me. Don't you see? Like, like Papa used to do. So I... I settled for Ambrose. Just like everything else in my life, it went wrong. I ended up taking care of him. I'll take you back now, Libby. You're, uh, angry with me, aren't you? Well, I guess you have every right to be. Keith, if what I did tonight seems, well, shameless to you, I'm sorry. It's just that living the way I do, you... You learn to snatch at a moment of happiness. I thought I could stop loving you, Heath. But I guess I never will. A touching reading, my dear. But then, you've made a specialty of these scenes, haven't you? No, he's drunk. Not that drunk, my dear. Just remember what I told you, I never kill. I never have to. I can place a bullet so that life isn't worth living. Goodbye, Heath. Libby, I can't let you. Oh, I'll be all right. After all, where else could he find such a willing target? My wife has a penchant for rich, young admirers. But strangely enough, she always comes back to me. that, darling. It was the only thing you could do. Well, well, he fired. What do you do, rob the Frisco Mint? Shut up, Tedro. Sheriff, now that this here is such a high-class jail, I'll be expecting a doily on my breakfast tray. I can't help this, Heath. Rules. When Jared gets here, ask him if he knows a smart lawyer. You won't be needing a smart lawyer. You can get away with murder just as so long as your name's Barkley. You said you knew Heath Barkley in the mining camps. That's right. Well, how well did you know him? I told you we grew up together. We were... Friends. 
Just friends. What's going on here? Where's Heath? He's in a cell, Jared. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I had to lock him up. I apologize for treating him just like any other murder suspect. How many times do I have to tell you it was self-defense? Why won't he listen to me? Now, you remember Miss Keene by her stage name. She's the victim's wife. Heath shot her husband tonight. What makes you use the word murder? I believe I said murder suspect. At the moment, it's just a death under mysterious circumstances until the coroner's jury says otherwise. You're scheduling an inquest? Three o'clock tomorrow afternoon at the theater where the shooting took place. Tell me something, Archer. Have you really got a case, or is this just a chance to make the Barclays sweat? I'm not a fool, Jared. I have a case. A good one. Look, just because you bail me out of jail, you don't have to follow me around. What's the matter? You object to my company? I just want to see Liberty alone. Uh, for appearances' sake, it would be a lot wiser for you to avoid any personal contact until after appearances the inquest. Appearances be hanged. Now, I'm not letting Liberty face this alone. I was so worried about you. I got here as soon as I could. Whatever arrangement she's made, I'll take care of everything. Now, I don't want you to think... Now, it's all settled. Now, you're coming back to the house and stay with us until this is all over. Well, uh, thank you. I don't think I could face going back to that theater alone right now. Uh, Heath, the inquest is at 3 o'clock. I, I think it would be better if you stayed in town. Well, we can come back. We both have to clean up and change clothes. This is hardly an appropriate costume for an inquest. Well, I'm sure Audrey can find you something. Let's go home. it all straightened out? I'll explain later. Mother, Audra, this is Liberty Keene. I'm very glad to know you. How do you do? How do you do? I wish we were meeting under happier circumstances. I do, too. I've invited Libby to stay a few days with us. Good. I hope I'm not imposing. Not at all. Oh, what a lovely chandelier. Keith, do you remember the one back in Strawberry? The, the one in the hotel? You remember the bed I won for Papa? Her father made a bet that Libby could rattle the crystals with her singing. I broke some of them. The money Papa won helped pay for the repairs. Libby, why don't you try and get some rest? Audra, would you show our guest to her room? Come on, Heath. We got some talking to do. Never get arrested for murder in a pair of tied boots. Well, Heath? Now, don't get that look. There's nothing to worry about. There's plenty to worry about. And the sooner you get that through your head, the better off you'll be. The great Ambrose tried to kill me. I shot him in self-defense. How many ways can I say it? Then why does Phil Archer call it murder? How should I know? He's much too smart to try for an indictment without some pretty good evidence. Happened just like I told you. Now, let me see if I've got this straight. You and the victim's wife renewed an old love affair over a midnight supper at the Alhambra Club. It was never an affair. Then you returned her to the theater at a rather late hour and were confronted by her understandably angry husband. He was drunk, crazy jealous. Life with him must have been hell for her. A relationship nonetheless sanctified by marriage vows. Jared, is this necessary? I'm afraid it is. Now, tell me again what happened in that alley. He made threats. She went inside. Threats against whom? Me. And in spite of those threats, you entered a dark theater and killed him. 
A professional marksman in a fair fight. Now, do you expect the jury to believe that? Jared, you've got it all wrong. Haven't I told the truth? It's the word you use. You expect the prosecutor to use nicer words? All right, all right, Jared. Now, you've acted out the devil's advocate. Why? Surely you don't think Heath is guilty. Of course I don't think he's guilty. The trouble is, how are we going to prove it? Well, I'll match Jared against that smug Jaybird Archer any day. Well, wake me in an hour, huh? isn't it? Sure it is. There's nothing to worry about. I will tell it just like it happened and that'll be the end of it. <sighs> Libby, I was raised on trouble. You'll be all right. Trust me. Read all about the murder. Read all about the murder in the theater. Come and get your paper Willie, right Willie. now. You can't go on shouting about a murder. This can't rightfully be called a murder until a coroner's jury says a crime has been committed. Now, when they do that, then we can legally accuse a suspect. The day this town accuses a Barkley is the day the horn will sound judgment. Well, now, don't sell your fellow citizens short. They're honest men, and they'll hand down an honest verdict without fear or favor. How much it will cost them to get out of this? Heath was standing right there, right where you are, with a gun in his hand. Did he say anything? He said, I killed him. I killed him. That'll be all, Sheriff, thank you. Unless you wish to bring forward any other facts pertinent to this murder. The word murder, Mr. Archer, is completely out of order here. I stand corrected. And remind you that any defense of your brother at this time is equally out of order. And I remind you both that this is an inquest, not a trial, and I am in charge. You're dismissed, Sheriff. Do you have any further witnesses, Mr. Archer? Yes, sir. Call Mrs. Liberty Keene Carson, please. Mrs. Carson? Place your hand on the book. Swear to tell the truth as you see it, so help you. I do. Now, you are Liberty Keene, the widow of Ambrose Carson. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And the great Ambrose was billed as the world's finest pistol shot. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Well, isn't it ironic that he should be shot dead in a fair fight? But it was a fair fight. Ambrose had a gun in his hand and was stalking Heath when, when I called out to warn him. Well, madam, I find it very peculiar that you should show greater loyalty to a stranger than you did to your own husband. I told you before, Heath Barkley and I are old friends. We grew up together in the mining camps. An old friend who saw nothing reprehensible about a clandestine supper with a married woman? Heath knew nothing of my marriage. I trust the prosecutor will introduce into evidence the fact that the young lady and my brother met just yesterday, for the first time in seven years. Hardly enough time to hatch a conspiracy, gentlemen. Sir, I have no evidence of conspiracy. Only evidence of a cold-blooded murder. Well, gentlemen of the jury, I'd like you to recall the coroner's report that was read to you earlier. It stated that the witness's husband was a victim of two bullet wounds, one in the right arm and the second fatal one in the right temple. Now, the deed isn't very hard to reconstruct, is it? The first shot hit him in his right arm, his gun arm, preventing him from returning any fire with any degree of accuracy. Then the killer came forward and, taking careful aim, shot out his victim's life. Now, that's the way it happened, isn't it? No. No? No, it happened some other way? Or no, you didn't see him shoot your husband? Because you ran outside when the gun started going off. Well, that's it, isn't it? 
That's it. You were lying when you said you saw a shooting in self-defense. You didn't see anything. You didn't see anything! I told the truth. It was the truth. You told a lie. You told a lie in order to save a man about whom you were so concerned after the shooting. A man you called Darling standing over the dead body of your husband. Motive for murder, gentlemen. Lust for a beautiful woman. A motive as old as original sin. Sorted reading, doesn't it? I heard the porter call you Mr. Barclay. Are you one of them? What's it to you? Well, don't get huffy. I'm Fletcher of the Oakland Bulletin. If there's another side to that story, I'm the man to see it gets into print. Anything to say? Nothing. Been a Salinas horse auction. Kind of a shock, huh? You might say that, yes. I guess right now you're wishing the old man's cold had never come out of the woods. Nobody says that about him to me. You better get used to it. You're gonna find people like a good scandal, Barkley. And when the mud's on you rich ones, they like it twice as much. How's Libby? Is she all right? She's fine. You know, I'm glad she's got you to look after her. Libby's had a hard time all her life. Right now, there's something hurt and helpless about her. She needs somebody to take care of her. It's you we're concerned about. I left strict orders he was to have no visitors. Sheriff gave Miss Barkley special permission. Them being such important people and all. Shut up, Tedro. That's right, please, Mrs. Barkley. I'm sorry, Fred. I really can't understand your objections to my seeing my son. Well, your son is about to be tried for murder. Just because his name is Barkley doesn't give him any special consideration. Nor should it prejudice people against him. Oh? But are you accusing me of prejudicial behavior, Mrs. Barkley? Have you been reading the papers, Mr. Archer? Neither of us can control the free press. Not even to make it clear that half-truths have been twisted? You have one opinion, the coroner's jury had another. The newspapers are entitled to theirs. Not when they try to blame Heath for something beyond his control. The name he bears. Well, it seems to me you're unduly sensitive on that point. It's my name and I'm proud of it. I don't like seeing it smeared. Do you really believe there would be all this newspaper notoriety if a Barclay Warren involved? Would it cause statewide interest if, if that man Tedro were on trial? Now, I'll overlook your doubts about my integrity, Mrs. Barkley. But let me tell you this. Your coming here didn't help his case at all. I intend to examine every word of the testimony of the widow and the defendant. And if there's any change, well, there could be an accusation of conspiracy with you as intermediary. That was not the purpose of my visit. You have my word for that. And the word of a Barkley is sacrosanct. There's only one step from envy to hate, Mr. Archer. And I think you've already taken it. Nick! Jared! Oh, hello. Hi. How is he? Oh, very calm, for my benefit. I'm afraid you can't see him. Bill Archer says no one but Jared can see him until the trial. Well, I just want to tell him I'm back and he has nothing to worry about, so... I'll tell him, Nick. No. See you both at the house. The rig is over here. Does that mean you're sure he's going to be acquitted? It means he'd no more commit murder than herd sheep. And you Barclays intend to stand behind him all the way. With everything we've got. You ought to be more careful with words. 
that could be construed as a threat to use the Barclay money, prestige, and influence to make sure your brother gets off. Well, now, I wouldn't say it quite that way if I were you. You trying to tell me what I can write? I'm trying to tell you you misquote me and you're going to get yourself in an awful lot of trouble. Is that a threat? That's a promise. Thank you for a very good quote, Mr. Barclay. I think you're going to find out you aren't so high and mighty. Nick! Nick! I suggest you pour yourself a drink, Nick. I guarantee you, you're going to need it. Oh, why? We have our name in the paper. Ranching heir Nick Barkley to date threatened. What a filthy rotten lies. How, how can they print lies like that about important people? Well, it's a rather involved question of semantics. Now, Nick may have only said promise to that newspaper man, but I understand he said it rather forcefully. Well, now, what was I supposed to do? Just let him get away with it? You know, your father used to say, when you wear a silk hat, you must be able to duck. Otherwise, you make yourself a target for every bobtail who can throw a rock. Now, that's the price you pay for being a Barkley. Yeah. Only in Heath's case, it could be a lot more than just rocks. It could be a rope. No, they, they can't. They, they can't do that, not to Heath. We won't let them, will we, Jared? Believe me, Liberty, we'll do everything we can. Jared. Jared, you have got to make them listen. You've, you've got to make them understand how he was. He, he was cold and cruel and insanely jealous. If only I hadn't gone to see Heath that night. It, if, if I hadn't screamed after Ambrose hit me. That's why he came back. To help me. Now we've got to find a way to help him. What do you mean you're going to get another lawyer to defend now me? Now calm down, will you? Porter Hammond is one of the best. He's a master with the jury. The prosecutor wants to see you, Jared. It's important. All right. Jared. But we don't need another lawyer. I think we do. Public opinion is running against us. We need somebody outside the family. No. Now, I put my money on you and it's staying on you. Hammond is on his way over here. I'm starting to feel sorry for you. He's trying to back out. Maybe you ain't such a member of the family as you thought. I wouldn't have believed it of you, Jared. I wouldn't have believed you've been so stupid. He had nothing to do with it. I told you that. Nothing to do with what? Go on, tell the big-time San Francisco lawyer what you just told me. Well? I killed Ambrose. Well, doesn't that surprise you, Barkley? Archer thinks you put her up to it. Figuring a jury would go easier on a pretty woman. Well, Liberty, if you're telling the truth, that means that Heath is lying, doesn't it? He must be taking the blame for you. Heath knew nothing about it. The theater was dark. He, he didn't see me fire the shot. With the what? With a gun you just happened to have in your hand? The gun case was on the table. Ambrose had one, I used the other. And you claim that in the dark, with all those bullets flying around, yours was the one that killed him? I'm a very good shot. Really? Sheriff, let me have your pistol. Let me check and see how well Mr. Barkley has coached you. Don't push me too far, Phil. I don't need her to win this case, and you know it. Well, just in case you're tempted, we'll put her to the test. Look, that wanted poster up on the wall, the man in the poster. Go ahead, shoot him. Now, were your hands shaking that much that night? Go ahead, it's dark. The guns are going off. Show us how you hit him. Go ahead. Go ahead, you don't have the time now. Go ahead and shoot. All right. 
You realize you might have gone to prison if your ability to handle a gun had been any better? You lied here, and you lie on the stand. Reconstructing the crime, Counselor? Something like that. Those are the dressing rooms, huh? Uh, yeah. Would you mind unlocking them for me? Oh, not at all. Oh, say, by the way, uh, if it's any uh, use to you, Ambrose was hitting the bottle pretty hard that night. Oh, really? Yeah, I noticed it before they went on. I told her to get some food in to him. Poor thing, I sure feel sorry for her. This is hers, huh? Oh, yeah, this is his right next to it. I wonder what she's gonna do now. It's, you know, it's kind of hard on a young woman, all alone and near broke. She never could make it singing. I guess she can always go back to sharpshooting. I didn't know Liberty did any shooting. Oh, sure. Ambrose taught her all kinds of trick shots. I caught their act once a couple of years ago. Just like all the others, until he got the bright idea of uh, making her the unexpected target. You know, kind of surprised the audience. Him pretending he's drunk and she's in danger. Uh, well, uh, when you're finished, I'll be in my office. Thank you very much. Something that can't be taken care of at the office? I've come to ask a favor, Phil. A big one. Come in. Sit down. <laughs> I didn't know you still paid the tuba, Phil. Why should you know? We haven't traveled in the same circle since we were in law school together. Seems to me we were friends then. <sighs> People and water, they both seek their own level. What is the favor, Jerry? Phil, I want you to consider, just for the sake of argument, the possibility that Liberty might have been telling the truth yesterday. You know, I figured you were bluffing when you said you didn't need her to win your case. She said she was a good shot. Yeah, well, you saw how good. Good enough to be part of the act at one time. Then how do you explain what happened yesterday? Nervousness, cold feet. Or possibly the expert way you drove at her. At any rate, she was at the scene of the crime. And I'm convinced she had a reason for wanting Ambrose dead. Speculation. There's no way to prove that. But there is. We can compare the death bullet with a bullet fired from Heath's gun. Oh, the bullet was never removed. Why not? Well, Heath was found standing over a dead man with a gun in his hand. He confessed to the killing. There was no need to mutilate the body. Phil, I want to see those bullets. I want you to agree to an order of exhumation. That's the favor. He's buried in the churchyard. That's consecrated ground. I know that, but there's legal precedent. It was ordered in San Francisco three months ago. But this is not San Francisco. Here in Stockton, the dead have a right to sleep undisturbed. What's more important, Phil? Respect for the dead or justice for the living? I'm a public official. Now, that's very important to me. I've worked very hard for a very long time. May I ask what that has to do with it? Well, I wouldn't expect a successful big city lawyer to understand. I'm only interested in justice, equal justice. What is it you resent, Phil? The fact that I didn't have to work as hard for success as you did? Don't be ridiculous. Then why are you out to get Heath? Why do you refuse to even consider the possibility that he may be innocent? Because he is guilty! And none of your courtroom magic can cheat justice! 
You know something? You're infected. Infected with the same blind rich man, poor man prejudice that's spreading all through this town. Or are you the source of it? Get out of here. Go on, get out. a grave I can't do that we've got permission not from Archer you went to the judge we figure that bullet can clear Heath or put a rope around his neck expect this kind of cooperation, Phil. I want to thank you. You're risking everything, Barkley. Your reputation, your career, and your brother's life. Libby, what are you doing here? Mr. Archer said there may be a way I could help you. Well, that isn't quite correct. I wanted you here while we conducted this experiment. You see, Mr. Barkley has a theory that it was you who killed your husband. That's a lie. She couldn't have. I, I wish I had. I wish it had been me instead of Heath. Jared, you leave her out of this. I'm afraid I can't do that, Heath. You see, bullets from the same gun have identical markings and weight. Now, we're going to compare the death bullet, the one on that scale there, with the bullet from Heath's gun. This is your gun, isn't it? That's right. Well, this scale is from the assay department of the bank. It's completely accurate. I'm so sure, I'm so very sure. I had to kill him. I had to. I was afraid for Heath. Ambrose would have killed him. It would have been my fault. All my fault. You didn't have to kill him to prevent that. You're an expert shot, Liberty. Despite that deceptive exhibition you put on here, you could have placed this bullet anywhere you wanted. You wanted him dead. shoot me.
Libby. Libby. I'll get a doctor. Yeah. I'll try to talk. They have to talk. They have to make you understand. I, I never wanted to hurt you, Heath. I never thought you'd go to trial. Thought the Barclays were too important. Maybe there's no need to explain. Help me. Make them understand. I had to kill him. How he was. How he treated me. How, how else could I escape? How, how else could I marry you? Libby. Where are all the bright lights Papa promised? Where, Papa? dream all, almost came true. Just that far away. Libby? Libby. See you punish yourself this way. They're both dead. She killed Ambrose because of me. No. She killed him because she was too weak at 16 to live your kind of life and too weak at 25 to live with her own mistakes. I keep remembering when we were kids all of the things she wanted. And all her life they were just out of reach. that far away. She wanted the wrong things. And she could have had so much. So very much. I've come to apologize. Well, you were right about me. It was a personal resentment of you. Of your success. And your way with people. Oh, if either of you want further satisfaction, we can go out behind the barn. Well, what do you think, Heath? Down by Snyder's Creek? Well, since there isn't going to be any trial tomorrow, we can see if the fish are biting. Well, after everything that happened... If it'll make you feel any better, Phil, you can dig the worms.
howdy. What a fine-looking paint job. Boy, howdy, it sure is. Did Diego do it? Come think of it, I did. Oh, come to think of it. Well, I knew I'd be riding with a beautiful lady on a fine spring day. Couldn't have a wagon, it wasn't fitting. Well, well, going someplace? And you didn't forget my fishing tackle. Mm -hmm. Wrap safely in that rug. Ah, you think of everything. You people know I'm not going to be able to get to that lodge for at least another month. That goes for you too, Heath. Well, I figure I can cut that down to a week. The way I work. Uh-huh. Of course, I don't apply to everybody. Uh, what's in the sack? Those happen to be my decoys. And when I get up there, I better not find any of them beaks broken, you hear me? Oh, well, Nick, maybe you better stow it yourself. Easy! <laughs> <laughs> All this could have waited for another week or two. We have all that spring plowing to do, Mother. I know, but the thaw came early, and I thought it would be nice to get the house open, just in case you could get up here. Mm, well, I might be able to fit it in one day, but, but no more. How soon? Next weekend. Now, listen. Anything you find over four pounds in that stream up there is mine. Tell Audra I'll be back in plenty of time to help her with a new dress. All right. All set? See you. See you. I'd like to take them. I've just been waiting for you to ask. Yeah! You know, you should do this kind of thing more than once a year, Mother. Should I? Why? Oh, the sun, the wind. Smell of spring, it's all right there in your eyes. Well, now, that's very sweet of you, Heath. But I think it's more than the sun and the wind and the spring. Well, what then? Oh, I don't know, driving this team, being useful to my family. You know, when you're all up at the lodge and I see how much you enjoy yourselves, why, that makes me happy, too. Do you think that's all we want of you, to be useful? Oh, no, no, I do have other virtues, but... Being useful to my family is what I want. All right. Why don't you quit poking along, get this team moving? You want to take all day? Right, sir. Yo! <laughs>
were sure the roads would be dried by now. Well, we could have gone by way of Calaveras Pass, but I reckon it's just as bad this time of year. Oh. Well. Oh! <laughs> Well, it looks like it's going to be my turn to be useful. When I tell you, whip them up and keep moving. Right. Leverage, Mother. You gotta have leverage. I don't know if I can lift it. If I can, it will only be an inch or two. It'll be enough, Mother. I should have known the trails wouldn't be dry enough. Mother, don't. Listen, there's some, there's some rope in the driver's box. You can loop it around the wagon and up around that, that tree and get one of the horses to pull. All right, I'll try. Oh! 
Not it. Try it again. It's not strong enough. I can't take the chance. It might fall back on you. I'm going to get Nick and some of the others. Okay. You think you can hold out? I'm all right. It's, it's not too clean, but it's, it's soft to lie in. <laughs> I need help. Our wagon broke an axle and turned over. My son is underneath it. Please, we have to hurry. Didn't you hear what I said? Don't climb down, lady. You climb down off that horse, you're just going to have to climb right back on again. You mean you're not going to help me? That's right. I'm not your man. You're going to have to get somebody else. But it would take hours for me to get home. It'll be dark soon and... But... Didn't you hear what I said? My son is underneath that wagon. His legs may be... Lady, if I was in a hurry, I wouldn't waste no more time around here. You mean you actually refuse to help me? That's right. Well, all I need is for you to help me lift the wagon. It, it's only a few miles back. I think I made myself clear. I ain't gonna help you. Thinking. What are you doing? Oh, you, you just have to trust me. It gets dark before I get back. Uh. You think you think you can hold out? All right. I'll be back with help. Hurry, mother. <laughs> too dark to go on now. We'll make camp and wait till morning. I don't know how he got this far. If he headed east, we lost him. Wouldn't head east. Never make it through the pass. 
I figure it's in these woods somewhere. Yeah. If this ground wasn't so wet, we could sure get him out of here in a hurry. Hmm. Set fire to the brush. Watch it catch. You know, we'd have to do set back and wait for him to come a-flying. This is valuable timberland, Court. Shame it ain't dry. <laughs> Now I understand. I still need your help. Don't come any closer. Lady, if you shoot me, you're going to be just as far from help as you are right now. I don't think I'm going to have to do that. A man who would risk his life escaping from a chain gang is too eager to go on living to let himself be shot for any other reason. And you'd do that? Oh, the way I'd shoot a mad dog. Well, I sure ain't going to argue with that. I don't want to stay in this game too much. Look. There's two bounty hunters out after me. Well, I'm sorry about that, but I need your help. All right. But I can't go nowhere with these on. Lie down. Huh? Lie down. Put your feet up there. God, put them up. I think maybe you ought to let me do it, though. Now, lady, if you hit me, you're going to have two helpless men on your hands. Only one is helpless, my son. I hold still. Wait. Go on. Thank you. Let's go. Now, I said I'd kill you, and I mean it. And I said that there was two bounty hunters after I'm me. I'm not interested. You know anything about yes, bounty I hunters? Yes, I do. And you know what? They don't care whether you're innocent or guilty. All they care about is getting your corpse. Get going. Whatever you're thinking, forget it. Shut up! Ah! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! That was a mistake. Well, that was no mistake, lady. Now we're both on foot. Evens up my position a little bit. I still have the gun. That's right. And I got a little more time. And we still got a long way to go until we get back to where your son's at. This gun is going to make sure we get there. You know, if them bounty hunters catch up to us, you're going to have to let me go. And then you can get them to help you with your son. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Move. Doesn't my life mean anything to you? I'm telling you right now, as soon as they see me, they're going to kill me. Until they do, you're still free. I'm not even sure they are after you. But I am sure my son is under that wagon, and if we don't get to him quickly, he may die. Now move! <laughs> Uh, we might stand a better chance of catching him in these woods if we split up. Uh-huh. 
And if you catch him, you don't have to split the reward. Is that it? We stay together. <laughs> you, uh, you don't trust me much, do you? Nope. No more than you trust me. Yeah. <laughs> slow down! I said slow down! What's the matter? Pace too fast for you? I'm just trying to pick up a little time. I'll get away what you want. It's gonna be pretty hard to do with my ankle swelling up like this. Yeah, but you'll keep trying. That's right. How far is it? No more than a mile. You better hope it ain't no further than a mile. It's gonna be the longest mile you ever walked in your life. Go on. One eye on the trail and one eye on me. Come on, come on. And all your thoughts on your son there, underneath that wagon, waiting for his mama to come back to get him. I bet he really dotes on you. In fact, I bet he'd much rather spend his evenings with his mama than go out with the boys, ain't that right? Matter of fact, I'll bet you make him think he's just about the most wonderful thing in You know heard. nothing about him. I don't need to know anything about him. All I need to know is his mama. How old is he? About your age. Well, then that makes us just about the same. Only difference being that I'm wanted for murder. That's right. Harry Dixon, professional gambler. There's a $500 reward for me, wanted dead or alive. There's a wanted poster on me in every town in this county. I need the rest. All this walking isn't doing my foot any good. Now that poster gives me the legal right to kill you, which I'll do if you keep us here any longer. Then you wouldn't be any better than them bounty hunters because you'd be killing an innocent man. Now get on your feet, move! Gotta stay awake. You hear hear me. You'll die if you don't stay awake. Proud of a job. Should have checked wheels. Silas, where's Audrey? I believe she's on the way down, Mr. Nick. Well, as soon as I finish here, I want you to clear this table. She can help herself out in the kitchen. She does that any time she's hungry. Mm -hmm. Well, good evening, Miss Audrey. Good evening. Thank you. You're late. I was resting. Did you ever stop to think of all those 19 years of yours that you've just tossed out the window because you were just resting? I had a very good reason this time. I was up until 5 o'clock this morning. And what were you doing up till 5 o'clock this morning? 
writing a very difficult letter. And I still haven't finished it. And who is the lucky recipient of all this Billy Do of yours? Well, he's not going to think he's very lucky when he gets it. And I really don't want to hurt him. That's, that's why it's so hard to finish. So you're jilting him? Well, you can't exactly say I'm jilting him when I've only gone out with him twice. But he seemed to think that was enough for us to get engaged. Well, the truth is, I, I don't want to see him again. So you just sit down, write a letter, you say, Dear so-and-so, I don't want to see you anymore. Affectionately yours, Audra Barkley. Affectionately? Mm. Uh, sorry I'm late, Miss Barkley. Well, I didn't hear you say anything to Jared about being late. Say, Nick, I was talking to the sheriff. He mentioned that there's an escaped killer on the loose. Oh, where? Well, he broke out of Tamarack Jail. He's supposed to be heading east. Tamarack? That's up by the lodge, isn't it? That's right. Oh, well, maybe we better ride up there. Well, I don't think we could get there much before morning. Well, not necessarily. we would be pretty close to it. Besides, if anything should happen, I think he thought to be able to handle it. Don't you? Oh, I suppose so. Yeah. Stay awake. Stay awake. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He has traveling out the vintage with grace and soul. He has this no. faithful life of his terrible This leg was going to start to act up. Oh. Look here at the ankle iron. It was loose when we started. Look at it now. I've looked and you can still walk, and when you can't, you'll crawl. Now get on your feet. Ow. Oh. Oh. It's a trouble with amateurs. Play with them. You always get stung. They don't know the rules. You can't read their cards. I make my own rules. If you want to go on living, don't try anything. Uh. Uh. What else would you do besides kill an innocent man for that angel boy of yours? Why do you hate him so much? Why? Because you're forcing me to give up my life for his, that's why. And when you got him home safe because of my help, and you turned me loose to be hunted down by them bounty hunters. Ain't neither one of you gonna care about my being whipsawed. You sure you're gonna be able to sleep all right when you realize that you led me right to those bounty hunters? I don't know. You may be innocent, I don't know. But you still have a chance, and my son doesn't unless you help. Now get on your feet!
Ain't no saddle horse. He's had harness on him. If it's the only one Dixon could steal. Well, why ain't he on it? He's wearing leg irons, remember? No. Oh. Besides, he's the slickest card man I ever seen. You can sit there with a full house. He'll bluff you out with a pair of aces. Now, maybe, maybe that's what he's done here. He set up this animal as a bluff, throw us off the trail. <laughs> Looks like he was shot off, don't it? If he's carrying a gun, we ain't gonna take no chances. We shoot him on sight. Had we ever planned to do anything different? that way. You sure? I'm sure. You know, we'd be going around in circles. In that case, your boys... Shut probably... up and keep moving. You look a little tuckered out to me. You know, if you should faint on me... I'm not I going would... to faint. You must have been one of them pioneer mothers. One of them kind that fed the kids and drove the wagon and shot off the Indians and helped her man build his shack out in the wilderness. You talk too much, Mr. Dixon. Save your breath. Mr. Dixon? That's the first time anybody's been that polite to me in a long time. You sure this is the right way? You sure that mother instinct of yours didn't deal you a cold hand this time? <laughs>
ремонтировано. Before, but you're not anymore. You deserve whatever those men do to you. If they catch me, which they ain't gonna do. I don't have to sit here and prove to you that I'm innocent. But I am. Now, they don't put a price on a man's head without good reason. Man makes his living gambling ain't gonna be believed when there's a bunch of witnesses around to lie about what happened. That's the first time and the only time in my life that I ever killed anybody. It all happened so fast, I couldn't help myself. But it was in self-defense. You don't believe that, do you? Do you? I believe any man who's so afraid for his own skin is much better off dead. Oh, hitting a woman should be easy for you. You don't know much about bounty hunters, do you? I've sat at tables with them, and I've taken their money. Squashing out a man's life is just as easy to them as stacking a deck. Are you any different? I trimmed a few pigeons that night, that's all. And then they followed me outside after the game, and they tried to get their money back with guns. And I had to shoot a man before he shot me. And that's what happened. And then they all jumped on me, and they took their money back, and they went and they got the sheriff, and they brought him back, and they said that I had stolen their money. They were well known in the town. I was a stranger. And no one to speak up with a stranger. Not even the people who saw you win. That's right, no one. Not one soul. Not even my own mother. Your mother? Yes, ma'am. My own mother. She must have been an awful lot like you are at one time. At least that's what I used to think when I was little. Then one day she just wasn't there anymore. I asked my daddy what happened to her, and he told me that I was to forget that she was ever even my mother. Like that was the easiest thing in the world for a 10-year-old boy to do. Then he started leaving me with the neighbors and going his own way. And I figured it was time. <laughs> I better go my own way. So I started gambling. Figuring that was the best way to forget about her and forget about everything else. And the first time that I saw her in all those years was that night in that town, in the bar. She came up to me and asked me to buy her a drink. She didn't know who I was. But she was all made up to look real young. And then I told her who I was. She called the bartender over, and she told him to throw me out for insulting her. I sat there in that town all those days, waiting for them to hang me. She'd seen the shooting, and she didn't know who I was. She never even came and saw me. I sent a letter with the deputy to her. And she never even opened the letter. You can go now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but whatever she did to you, that's no reason for refusing to help me. Please just go. Oh, you feel sorry for yourself, don't you? 
You're so full of self-pity you even hate my son. Because his mother happens to love him, you'd rather see him dead than raise a hand to help him. Wait. It can't be a whole lot further. <clears throat> My leg can hold out. So I walk the valley, the shadow of death. God, why doesn't somebody come? Why don't they come? has to come off. Oh. A bullet would break the rivet. Yeah, but that'd bring back the bounty hunters. That's how they got on my trail in the first place, was hearing that shooting. I seem to remember a stream. I don't think it's very far away. The cold water would help the swelling go down. Come on, Mr. Dixon. Lean on me. Lean on you. It's about time you learned how to lean on a woman. Come on. You won't throw in your cards, will you? I can't. I can't even make it to that stream. No clouds in the sky at all. It'd be too much to hope for a clap of thunder right now to cover the sound of this. some circulation in it. You know, you were right. I think I did envy your son. No, no, no. 
No, no, come on. If you men would help me, I'd like to get my son home as quickly as possible. We're looking for somebody. An escaped murderer. Maybe you've seen him. No, I haven't seen anybody like that. Did you hear some shots? Yes, I heard them. Was it close by? Well, I was too busy to pay any attention to it. Is that your horse up in the woods? Uh-huh. If you men would please help me. Like I said, lady, we're looking for a murder, and I don't leave much time to fool around with anything else. Let's go. That man who helped you, see the one they're looking for? An escaped murderer? I don't think so. What kind of man was he? Oh, young, a gambler. A gambler who played his cards for love instead of money. I don't understand. You will. When I get you home, I'll tell you all about him. Mm -hmm. 